It's Tuesday night, all right? Y'all just stay standing. We ain't done yet, all right? And there's about seven of y'all singing out there because I was watching you. Now, some of you were singing, but I want y'all to sing, okay? And, I, you know, so where we can go ahead, there's still, I think, there's about three foot of room above the highest part of this attic until we get to the roof, amen? And I think we can push this top up just a little bit in here tonight. We can praise our Lord, Amen. We can praise our Lord. Amen. 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 Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior. Forever will I he saw me yeah. and he bought me. praise amen let's open in a word of prayer father we thank you lord for just a time to come and just to worship you to sing praises to you god because you're so worthy lord i thank you for the the day that we've had and lord i pray right now as we enter into a time of worship and time to to hear from you and to to hear through your word god that you would speak to us and lord i ask you right now from the very beginning of this service, there's one here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. God, I pray that tonight would be that night that they'd surrender and call upon you and ask you to save them. Have your way in this service. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. It's just been a good day. It's been a good day. We've had just enjoyed ourselves. Uh, we're getting accustomed to the South Louisiana life. Amen. Uh, the humidity's coming up. Praise the Lord. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's just warm. And so we're just going to uh, continue just to love it because I'm telling you, I got tired of the cold weather. Uh, and it's nothing like having airlines froze up on the bus and laying on the Walmart parking lot with a hair dryer trying to thaw them out. That's just not a fun thing. But it is a joy to be here tonight. You know, as, as the day has gone by, 
there's been a lot of things that was mentioned, uh, prayer request in our prayer group before the, the service started. Pastor said something that just really struck me a while ago when he said the ones that was killed in the, the accident on Saturday. I wonder if they knew the Lord. That they had, somebody had time to share the gospel with them before they left on that trip. I ask you to apply that to your life. To someone that you know that may not know the Lord. What if it's their time? We don't know, but what if it is? And you took the time out of your busy schedule and said, Hey, I'm just worried about you. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Because that's the important thing. That's, that's what it's about. Sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, as we go into this service tonight, you've heard me say this all week. There ought to be somebody on your heart that you're praying for. I know of several of you because you've come to me and, and we've prayed for. Guess what? We, we're not going to quit either. We're not going to stop just because we hadn't got the answer yet. God's working on them. Amen. I believe that with everything that is within me. And one of these days, we're going to get to see we're going to get to see when God says, come here and look. Come here and see. As you prayed and as, as you told about me, look what happened. Look at, look at what's here. So you pray about that tonight. You, you let God direct you. You let that person that God has placed upon your heart. You let God move. Oh, with everything she had, she reached 
out with her hands and she touched the hem of his robe and suddenly her pain went away could hear her say, I've searched Jesus, I've touched the Savior, the Son of God sent to us, the promised one. Oh, Oh, and then I look upon his 
Praise the Lord in the house. Well, I've been a soldier in God's mighty army for many long years ago. And I've been scarred and wounded in battle. And many times I've been brought, oh, solo. But by the sign of the time I may realize I've only one more mile to go. Well, is that the lights of heaven up above? I feel like running my last mile. Oh, yes, I feel like running my last mile. Oh, my sea of gray band of angels around God's soul. Oh, what a great celebration. While they just roll on, I feel like running. Well, Jesus said, when he reached down to save me, I'll go with you all the way. And so I stepped out on his precious promise and to feel me both night and day. Oh, well, I know it's been many years, but I still can feel the spirit burning in my soul. Well, it gives me just a taste of one life ahead. Oh, yes, I feel like running my last mile. Oh, I see a green band of angels around God's soul. No one green celebration while they just roll on. I feel like running my last mile. Oh, yes, I feel like running my last mile. Oh, I see a green band of angels around God's soul. No one green celebration while they Roll on, I feel I like run in my last mile home. I feel I like run in, yes, I feel I like run in. I feel I like run in, yes, I feel I like run in. I feel I like run in my last mile home. Oh. What a day it's going to be, and then we're going to get to run. Amen? I, I'm excited about Jesus. I'm excited about what he's done in my life. Guess what? You can get excited about what he's done in your life. If you've never met him before, and you're going, what are these, what's up with these folks? Why are they smiling and singing about somebody that ain't even here? Well, if you'll meet him, you'll understand why. You'll understand just how great a God that he is and how worthy he is. Well, Jesus said, when he reached down to save me, I'll go with you all the way. So I stepped out on his precious promise and to feel me both night and day. Well, I know it's been many years, but I still can feel the spirit burning well, in my soul. Oh, well, it gives me just a taste of one life ahead. I feel like a Oh, yes, I feel like running by last mile. Oh, I see a great band of angels around God's door. No one great celebration while angels roll on. I feel like running my last mile. Oh, yes, I feel like running by last mile. Oh, I see a 
in green man the names around God so no wild in green celebration while they just roll all I feel I run in my last mile home I feel I run in yes I feel I run in I feel I run in yes I feel I run in I feel I run in my last mile home oh It's good to see some folks that uh, this is your first night to be here. I pray you'll come back. I really do. And uh, I, I want to go ahead and introduce everybody to you, and then we'll, we'll get on, as the feller says, with a get on. Amen. And uh, over here singing our high part, and uh, she also plays the mandolin, writes a lot of songs. And uh, this is my daughter-in-law. Would you make Ashley Tally welcome tonight? The young man that's playing the box, a dad's got to be proud of a son that plays a box. And, uh, but now I'm thrilled that God has blessed him with a, uh, a gift and a talent, and he wants to use it for the Lord. And he is married to Ashley, and would you make my son, Mr. Jonathan Talley, welcome. <laughs> young man that's back there in the back taking care of our sound and video, uh, are we streaming tonight? Amen. Amen. We, oh, by the way, we, we had how many last night watching? We had 24 households watching last night, so it's going up a little each night, so praise the Lord. But he comes from Queen City, Texas. Make Mr. Stephen Hayes welcome back there. And if you've been in the prayer groups, uh, you've heard my wife speak, and uh, she's sitting down here on the front row, and she is smiling. That's good. Amen. And uh, her, her, her Valentine's gift came in today. Thank you, Lord. And so... Yeah, so uh, it's about time. Well, I ordered it beforehand, you know, but we're on the road, so it has to follow us. <laughs> yeah, okay. Amen. But would you make my wife Penny Tally welcome? The man over here that started the group 25 years ago does a wonderful job leading the group, preaches, sings, does so much for the ministry, but make welcome my dad, David Talley. Lord, no one has been there like you. No one could help me, Lord, like you do. In every trial. Like you, oh, 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 
Lord, and the one who helped me, Jesus. Lord, like you do. And in every trial that I have gone through, Lord, no one has been there like you.
share with you what I've been through in my life and what God's brought me through. I tell people every time I go to share my testimony, God's not told me I was going to. <laughs> God told me I was going to share my testimony tonight. I said, okay. Dad looked at me and said, go ahead. <laughs> so it's for someone here tonight that needs to hear this. At the age of nine, I started playing drums for the group. At the age of 13, I started singing lead. I'm 19 now. At the age of nine, I came back from VBS, seen a bunch of my friends walk the aisle and get saved. I told Dad, I said, I want to do what they're doing. So he led me into prayer like he was supposed to do. And see, I did it here. But I didn't do it here. Went to a life. I was in public school for, till about my ninth grade year. I didn't party. I didn't drink. I didn't do none of that. But I hung out with the ones who, who did. And we were we were still. We, I mean, we were singing at that time, and and started wanting to fit in with the crowd. Started wanting to listen to the music that they listened to started wanting to talk to all the girls and didn't want to follow God at the age of 16 I met Ashley and we started dating and while we were dating she got saved and not that she was a bad person but there was a change that happened there was a different look there was a different sound there was a change that happened. And I realized I had never had that change. So I started doubting my salvation. I was like, well, am I saved? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Am I saved? And I would put it off. I thought, well, I'll just do it when we get home. Well, we're never home. We were gone 300 days last year, so we were never home. I would just put it off. But, well, I write songs about Jesus. I lead people to the Lord. I'm in church every time the door's open. Yeah, I'm saved. Then I go back, am I saved? See, there's a difference in thinking you're saved and knowing. See, I thought I was saved. February the 22nd of this past year, Ashley had came back from college that morning and we were all at the house and getting ready to do morning Bible study and Satan had been fighting our relationship, had been fighting the ministry because I was letting him. I just, I was like, okay. I told her, I said, I'm tired of running. She said, what do you mean? I said, I'm lost. She said, whoa, what do you mean you're lost? I was like, I'm going to go to hell. She's like, hold on, hold on. So she went and got mom and dad and Steve, and they all came in the living room at the house. And we all sat in our assigned seats at the live, in the living room. They had their, mom and dad have their chairs. Me and Ashley have a couch, and Stephen has a couch. And dad looked at me. He said, well, what's going on, John? I said, I'm lost, Dad. He said, what do you mean you're lost, John? He said, I led you in that prayer when you were nine. I said, Dad, you love me, but God didn't. 
I followed you, but I didn't follow him. I did it here, but I didn't do it here. We would be doing services, and God would tell Dad that there's someone out there that's holding back, that won't let go because they're worried about what people were going to think about them. Him not knowing it, it was me. See, I was the one closest to the altar. I was close. I was right there beside him, and it was me. See, I was worried about what people were going to think about me. If I was to step off the platform and say I was lost. See, because I was supposed to be the one there ministering to them. See, but it doesn't matter what people think. It matters what he thinks. And he wants you saved. Dad looked at me, and that was February the 22nd that morning, and he looked at me, he said, well, how do you know you're lost, John? And I told him, I said, that, that was February the 22nd. I said, February the 21st. I said, we were out of prison, Dad. I said, 40-something men got saved. Dad shared the other night, and the man stood up and said, preacher man, I need to be saved. That night, I was lost. We were standing on stage. God was moving all around. 40-something men got saved. People were being saved. People were being healed. People were getting right. God was moving all around me. And I told Dad, I said, Dad, he said, how do you know you're lost? I said, Dad, it's like looking out the window. I said, you can see the trees blowing, but you can't feel the wind. I said, that night God was moving all around me, and I was just up here with a mic, standing. I was just standing there. Wasn't getting nothing. I was just there. Prisoners were coming up. And they're like, man, that was an awesome service. What now? I was like, yeah, it was. And it was a good service. But I was just there. Because I had never asked him into my heart. Because, see, the wind was blowing, but I couldn't feel it. Dad looked at me. He said, well, what do you want to do about it? I said, well, I want to be saved. He said, well, what are you waiting on? I said, nothing, I guess. So, February the 22nd of this past year, even though I had been in church every time the door was open, even though I had wrote songs about Jesus, led people to the Lord, I realized I was lost. And I needed Jesus. There's so many people out there that think they're saved. But then their mind are going, what am I? From preachers to singers to people who turn on lights. Anybody you can think of. They're lost. Maybe you're down your salvation like I did. You don't have to. Because February the 22nd, I knelt down a good person. Came up a saved person. Praise the Lord. told dad, I said, dad, when I got saved, I told dad, I said, dad, we were, before I got saved, we were going to El Dorado, Arkansas. It was three o'clock in the morning. And I was in the back of the bus playing video games, trying to stay awake because I had just started driving at that time, start driving the bus. And in case dad needed me, I was there in case he might need a break or something. And I felt the bus jerk. And you don't feel that bus jerk like it did. So I ran up to the front really fast, and I'm like, what happened? And then the other singer at that time, they weren't, they, they weren't telling me nothing. Their eyes were just big, and they were as white as could be. I said, okay. So I got mad. I said, well, since you're not going to tell me, I'm going to bed. So it's like, ha. <laughs> and um, I found out that morning what happened. We were coming down a hill, and there was a two-lane bridge the bottom of the hill. It was in a valley. On the other, other side of the hill, there was a car coming towards us. And we hadn't seen a car in 20-something miles. On the front of that bus, there's no hood. It's just glass and a steering wheel. And that bus is 102 inches wide. In other words, it takes up one whole side of the road. And that bridge, it was just a little small bridge. It might have been a little bit longer than the bus. And it was just a wall, lane, lane, and a wall. There was no shoulder. 
And Dad knew, by the way, we were going, and the car was coming that we were going to meet on the bridge. You know, didn't think nothing about it. Well, got on the bridge, and that car got two feet into our lane. And all Dad could do was stand up and say, God, you got to do something. Dad said, I seen the headlights. Dad said, they missed us by that much. He said, they didn't swerve. They went straight over like somebody picked the truck up and moved it. I told Dad, I said, if I was to die that night, I would have went to hell because I was worried about what people were going to think about me. I was worried about what people were going to think about me, so I would have went to hell. Eternity is too long to be wrong about your salvation. It doesn't matter what people are going to think about you. If you're worried about what somebody's going to think about you in the church, they probably need to be down there with you. If you're worried about what your family's going to think, don't. Because you might be the one that plants that seed that they see a change and accept Jesus. After I got saved, I wanted to go tell all of my friends, you know. I got saved and those friends left. I was like, okay. See, but no, that don't matter. I share this because some people kind of just shrug it to the side. You know, they're like, because I know a lot of people here, you don't know what could happen when you get in your car. Well, if that's not good enough. There was a boy from Ashley's hometown. He was 13 years old. He was playing football. It was football practice. Got bit by a mosquito. Didn't think nothing about it. One morning, his brother walked in and the boy was having a seizure. And this boy that got bit by a mosquito had perfect, I mean, really, he had perfect health. And so they started doing all these scans and doctor's appointments. Can't figure out what it was. It's, that mosquito had a rare disease. Luckily, the boy knew who Jesus was and had asked Jesus into his heart. He ended up passing away. But luckily, he asked Jesus into his heart. So you don't know what could happen. From a car wreck to a mosquito bite, you don't know what could happen. Before you even think about even getting out of your pew, you don't know what can happen. So don't leave here without getting it right because you need to know that you know that you know. You don't need to put it off either because you don't know what can happen. Maybe you're doubting your salvation like I did. You need to get it right. Don't worry about what people are going to think about you. Don't be scared to make the move. Because there's nobody that's going to look bad on you, look bad at you. Probably going to come up and cry with you. If you know you're lost, don't leave here without getting it right because you need to know that you know that you know. A good friend of ours wrote this song. It's called He Covered It All. We were He was at our studio and me and Dad were putting the music down and Dad wrote this wrote the second verse down and it says now I am living a brand new life I'm free from all the shackles and chains in my mind and now I'm singing a brand new song of how Jesus saved me and he covered it all see I can sing that second verse because I've asked Jesus in my heart and because it means something to me now and I asked a good friend of ours Ed that wrote that and I said I said could I sing that I said that's my testimony song I mean he covered it covered it all not some all and he's like man I would love for you to sing it but if you're doubting your salvation if you know your loss don't leave here without getting it right listen to the message of this song called he covered it all mm, yes I'm done many things I'm not proud of I'm disappointed many and I've hurt the ones that I love oh but in one moment his grace I saw and she Jesus, he had mercy and he covered it all yeah. from the east to the west. Oh, my 
sins are from me Oh, when he took all my heart And now I am free Oh, and beauty for ashes And peace for my wrong but you know that Jesus, He had mercy and He covered it all. Listen to the second verse of this. Now I, I am living, oh, a brand new life. Cause I'm for free from all the shackles and chains of my mind oh and now now I am singing a brand new song church of how Jesus saved me and he covered sins are from me oh and he took all my heart and now I am free oh and beauty for ashes and peace for my own but And he covered it all in church beauty for ashes and peace for my home. Oh, my Jesus, he had mercy, yes, Lord. Oh, and Jesus. He had mercy on you. Oh, and Jesus, He had mercy, yes, Lord. And He covered it. Oh, Lord Jesus. as John begins to, to share his testimony with you I've never seen at any point in time when God speaks to him like that and he begins to share that he's speaking to somebody you're not here by chance tonight not at all and just as John I, I want you to understand something this kid at the age of 19 has been in more churches than a person that's probably 80 years old spent their life going to church. But see, going to church don't save you. See, that's where Satan wants to pull the wool down. Satan wants to trick you and say, oh, you're okay because you go to church. Church will send you to hell, folks. Jesus will save you. See, if, if I hadn't a... See, I, I probably could have convinced Jonathan at 19 years old that son you got saved when you was 9 years old because you prayed that prayer but my friend it's a personal relationship that's what it is it's about you meeting Jesus and introducing yourself to him and saying Lord I need you I want to know you that's what happened I want you to understand eternity is long folks we can't even get a grasp on what eternity is. We can't even get it in our, our little minds of what eternity is. We think that eternity is a week. Oh, my friend, there's no boundaries on eternity. 
and you want to miss heaven because of some junk here on earth that you would rather do than serve the Lord Jesus Christ life is just a vapor the Bible says it's here for a moment and then it's gone a vapor comes and then it goes my friend I want you to understand tonight the importance of knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior see you can you can drive, you, you can own a bus just like this out here and you can go and you can have all the equipment and you can even carry Bibles in it. You can put a bunch of Bibles in that thing, but guess what? That don't save you. You can pull up at the church and you can roll into the biggest church that there is and you can set up all the nice stuff and you can, you can carry in a 40-pound Schofield Bible and sit on the front row and smile. That don't save you. What saves you is you getting on your face before an almighty God and saying, Lord, I need you. I need you to come into my life and save me. Maybe before the end of the week, Ashley will share her testimony with you. This has been a, this is a good girl. Raised in church all of her life. Her daddy's a deacon. Her mama taught Sunday school. She's taught Sunday school. Been to every church camp that there was. December the 19th two years ago she asked Jesus into her heart got saved good girl got saved I want you to understand the importance of what's going on right here right now because there's a battle that's raging the line has been drawn Satan he don't, he don't, he don't want you to hear a thing at all but guess what some of you done heard it some of you done got it in your heart and now the wrestling's going on quit wrestling ask Jesus to come into your life and save you ask him to forgive you of your sins say Lord I have realized right now at this very moment I'm lost and I need you I've tried to fix it myself I've tried to I've tried to come to church every time the door was open I've tried to I've tried to, I've even sat down and read the Bible but God I don't know you personally See, the Bible's real clear. It says, in that day, many will stand before me and say, but Lord, but Lord, but Lord, didn't we do this? And he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I don't know you. In other words, he's going to say, I don't care about what you did down there because you never met me personally. Have you met him tonight? Have you met him personally in your life? Is there a change in your life? See, there's got to be a change in your life. You cannot, listen to me, you cannot know Jesus Christ and walk the same way you did before you met Him. It don't work that way. It's not a choosing relationship with Jesus Christ. You take Him and all of Him, not part of Him. See, you, you can pick and choose at a buffet, amen? You can get at a buffet and you can go down through there and say, well, I like the vegetable right here and I like the cornbread right here and I want some fried chicken, but I don't want none of the turnip greens, okay? But serving Jesus Christ is you take it all or it's nothing. You don't pick and choose what you want with Jesus Christ. You, you, you accept Him 100%. My friend, if you've never accepted Him 100%, why don't you meet Him tonight? He'll change your life. You've heard me say that since Sunday morning. He'll change your life. Ask me how I know. He changed mine. Ask me how I know I watched him change my son. Ask me how I know I've watched him change Ashley. Ask me how I watched him change Stephen. Got a lot of friends that have met him. My wife. I've watched him change my wife. changed your life it's a real question isn't it pastor see this is when it gets down where the rubber meets the road see I love to sing you know I love to sing I love to play and I love to open God's word but my friend when God says it's time it's time time's running out there was four in a car that time ran out for them last Saturday that they were just it was Saturday afternoon. You don't know, even know where they was going, but they, they had no clue at all that that would be the end. 
nine-year-old boy at home we found out today nine years old gone out hunting was walking through tripped and fell in a creek the gun discharged and killed him nine years old he didn't know it's a normal day it's a normal day what if that car had not if God had not moved that car I want to tell you I was there I know what happened. As we began to make our way onto that bridge, and we got onto that bridge, that, that truck, I can tell you it was a Chevrolet truck. It was probably an early 90s model Chevrolet truck because of the way the headlights were on it. And it was over two foot into my lane. And there ain't no shoulder on a bridge. On this little old bridge, there wasn't a shoulder. And I couldn't get over it. And the closer we got on that bump of that bridge, it's... We went on it. Steve was sitting in the buddy seat and I was driving and that car kept coming over and coming over and I said, God, you've got to do something. And he picked that car up, that truck, and moved it over. Oh, it, it, it didn't swerve. It went just like that. But what if it hadn't? Oh, I know where I was going to spend eternity. I got my bags packed and I got a foot on the plane. Hello? I ain't scared. What about that guy driving that truck? What about him? I had a good idea of what was going on in his life because you ain't out at 3 o'clock in the morning like we are a lot of times unless you've been to a club or a bar. And that wasn't the last time he crossed over the yellow line because when we got off the bridge, he was way on over into the lane. What about it in your life? This is important stuff tonight. This is important things that are going on. See, Satan wants to trick you a lot of ways. He, he'll even trick you into coming to church to make you feel good about yourself. He'll make you feel that it's okay. Hey, you're all right. We were in Wichita, Kansas. We were doing a singing with five other groups, and we was the last group up to sing. The Holy Spirit started moving through that ch church, and it was a, a church that had five sections of pews in it. And over on this side over here, begin to share the gospel message with him. There was a gentleman there, 72 years old. A couple that was sitting on about the third pew right back here in their late 60s. 72, late 60s. These folks have been in church all their life. And as we begin to go on along, you've heard me if you've been here as I ask them to pray a prayer of salvation, asking the Lord to come into their life. At the end of that prayer, that 72-year-old man, he didn't do one of these shamed hand raises. He got it up there. This couple over here, they wasn't ashamed. They got it up there. After the service was over with, I went down and I hugged him. I said, man, I said, that's awesome. He said, you got me. I said, what do you mean I got you? He said, when you said going to church doesn't save me. He said, you got me. He said, I've been in church all of my life. My mama carried me to church. I've had my family in church. I've gone to church every time. He was a deacon in the church. Hello. I grew up in church. And he said, I, I thought I was okay. My friend, what has Satan got you tricked? You remember the other night I preached on what's he, what's he bribed you with? tonight here's what we're going to do we're going to cut to the chase amen we're going to get down to business and that's between you and God you've heard the gospel message John, Jonathan presented the gospel of Jesus Christ what happened to him see he realized that he was lost and undone and he needed a savior and he realized that he couldn't save himself and he realized there was no one but Jesus Christ that could save him. And he fell on his face on that floor. Oh, I can, I can carry you to the spot. It was 11.48 a.m. on February the 22nd. And he got down on the floor and he knelt down and he buried his face. He had been weeping and crying because he was so convicted of trying to live a life that was pleasing to others. But it wasn't pleasing to Jesus because he had never met him. 
had a there was a different look about him he had a peace don't you want peace in your life don't you want that peace the Bible says that passes all understanding and he'll he says take my yoke upon you and my friend when you put Jesus' yoke upon you it feels pretty good he says I'll take yours that's what he does so I'm going to ask you bow your heads right where you're at well preacher we ain't preached tonight yeah we have we done heard the gospel it's decision time in your life decision time in my life see here's the thing if you've met Jesus Christ and you know him as your Lord and Savior you're doing one of two things you're either drawing closer to him or you're falling away we don't stay the same he's very clear about that you better be drawing closer to him if you're not you better confess and repent and say God I need you to come in I need to confess some things to you I've done wrong and I want to draw closer to you I want more of you I want more of you than I've ever had before if you've never met Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior why not tonight quit holding on to the back of that pew and turn loose and give in to the Lord be the best decision you'll ever make in your life guess what you'll leave out of here different from the way you came in and you'll say man it's been a good night if that's you I'd be honored to lead you into prayer but I, I want you to understand me praying will not save you it's you praying and you asking the Lord to save you you confessing your sin to Jesus Christ you realize, realizing that he is king of kings and lord of lords that he died and he rose again for you and you asking him to save you and my bible says if you confess with your mouth that he is lord ask him to come in and save you he says he'll do just that right where you're at God will meet you right where you're at. You don't have to clean yourself up. You can't clean a fish before you catch it, folks. God will clean you up. God will take all that junk that's in your life and clean it up. Why don't you pray and ask Him? Why don't you ask Him to come into your life and save you? Right where you're at. Why don't you pray with me? Pray in faith believing, the Bible says. You pray. You ask the Lord. Pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And Lord Jesus, I believe you died and you rose again. And right now you're in heaven. Lord Jesus, I, I've messed up. Lord, and I need you. Lord, I'm lost. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life and save me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. Now I want to live the rest of my life serving you. Now with your heads bowed and eyes closed, all seriousness now, this is serious business. If you prayed that prayer and you meant business with God tonight, quit worrying about what somebody's going to think. Quit worrying about what you're going to do when you leave here. Quit worrying about what you're going to have to tell somebody. But if you prayed that prayer in faith and you asked the Lord tonight and you are serious about it, you prayed in faith and you asked God to save you, I'm going to ask you just to stand up right where you're at. Just stand up. Just stay standing. Christians, you be praying. You don't worry about what's going on because I want to tell you, God's taking care of business right, right now. If you're standing, I just want you to make your way down here to the front. I'm going to meet you down here. We're going to pray and we're going to rejoice. You just come on. Christians, you, you continue to pray.
at the feet of Jesus Greatness of mercy and love At the feet of Jesus We cry holy, holy, holy We cry holy, holy, holy We cry holy, holy, holy Is the man his Lord Hotel, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. Greatness of mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. We Here's the thing. God's been taking care of some business. But we continue to talk about revival. Oh, there's been some good things that's happened. There's been some great things that's happened. But it ain't done with yet. So I so I want you to understand something. If you if there's something in your life that's holding you back right now, no better place to come than this altar. I'd be honored to pray with you. But no better place to come. Don't worry about what somebody else is thinking right now. A lot of you have moved. A lot of you have come and prayed. But guess what? We all need a, a fresh touch from Jesus every day. Amen. We need more and more of him. So we're going to sing another verse. I'm going to ask you to stand. If you need to come, you come on. There's plenty of room. You say, well, I can't get down. Well, come up here and sit down. I want you to understand when you make a move to the altar, God says, that person's serious. They're serious about getting right. And then he says, ooh, that got my attention. We confess and we get right. I ask you at the beginning on Sunday, how many of you were serious about wanting revival? I'm going to ask you that question again right now. How many of you are serious about wanting true revival? Well, guess what? You won't get it just sitting there in the same place doing the same thing over and over and over. It don't come that way. You get it by confession and repentance, getting right with God. So I'm going to ask you again. Maybe you need to come. Maybe you need to come and pray. We're going to sing another verse. You get it right. You ask God to... If you can't think of anything, I'm like, pray for me. Pray for, pray for a pastor. Why don't you come down and pray for your pastor? Good gracious, alive. We're going to sing. Oh, Lord, we've fought hell. We lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. Greatness of mercy and love at the feet. Jesus, we cry holy, holy, holy. We cry holy, holy, holy. We cry holy, holy, holy. holy. Is the Lamb, yes, Lord. Thank you.
Praise in the house. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated for just a moment. Amen. 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 Before we we go along, uh, uh, I don't want to put anybody on the spot, when, but I, but I want to tell you this much: when somebody gets saved, I get excited. Amen. I want y'all to come up here and stand beside me. Amen. Yeah. Come on, somebody better be. This is shouting ground right here. This is Wanda. She accepted the Lord tonight. Give her a praise. Come on now. Amen. This is Diane. She accepted the Lord tonight. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all, ladies. Thank you so very much. Y'all seated. Yeah. Amen. Pastor. Yeah, as, hey, and guess what? Pastor's been here all night tonight. Come on. Give the Lord praise. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I like it. I think you look good right there. Amen. Uh, well, we're going to do... Amen. That's right. Amen. You want to say anything while you're sitting there? You talk from right there. You yeah, I do. I, 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 God is so good. I, I, I don't know if y'all know it or not, but God has you by your arm. He's got you right where He wants you. He's got me right where He wants me. I talk to a bunch of crazy doctors today and they told me I'm too sick to get well and so uh, my report was I'm in the hands of my father he told me he got something for me to do and I'm on my way to go get it done so uh, I thank God for you God likes to work when nothing else will amen amen well we're going to continue to worship right now and um, I want you to understand when you give, if you give going, <clears throat> can't believe we're going to take up another offering, well, why don't you just keep your money? Because you ain't giving with a heart of love. God's not going to bless you with that. But when you give, sowing into the ministries and saying, God, I want to see folks saved. I want to see more happen just like tonight where people come and get saved. So I'm going to sow into that. That's when God blesses you. God says he loves a cheerful giver. That word gets hilarious is what it means. So I pray there's a lot of hilarious givers in here tonight. That you're excited about continuing in worship. So we're going to receive a love offering. And... Uh, right we've got our product table back there uh, we've got a lot of a lot of items back there I used to say a lot of junk but I don't say that anymore and it's not even stuff it's a lot of items that you need and when you when you take those home with you if you please pay for them and uh, it blesses the ministry it sows into the ministry even more uh, our new CD is back there it's entitled he's right there it's got, he covered it all on there as well. And it's got, uh, I Touch Jesus. And I want to give you a little sneak. It's got a bonus track on there of I Touch Jesus. And the night that we recorded the vocals on this, uh, we just had a Holy Ghost meeting. And if you don't know what that is, see me after church, and I'll be glad to tell you about that. And, uh, but we had a time in the studio. We, we began to sing the vocals, and the Lord just gave me a vision of that woman taking everything that she had the, the woman with the issue of blood coming out of her house pressing through the crowd to touch the hem of Jesus' garment because she knew that she could be healed so there's some extra vocals on there and you just need to get it and listen to it uh, and it, it, I pray it will bless your heart we've got those and 
several other CDs back there as well, Bible covers. Also, uh, I'm, I'd love for you to go with us on the cruise next year, February the 2nd through the 7th. Uh, it's going out of New Orleans and go to Progresso and Cozumel. Uh, you can actually put a $50 deposit per person down right now. You've got a whole year to pay for it. Uh, it wouldn't take much, and you can have it paid for, and y'all don't have far to drive to get to the Port of New Orleans. And so uh, uh, we've got the information back there on that as well. We'd love for you to come and go with us. Uh, we sing and preach and study the Bible and have a good time on the high sea. Amen. And, uh, and so uh, we've got that back there. Are we ready to receive the offer now? Are we okay? All right. They're over here. pray right quick and then we'll father we thank you lord for tonight lord we rejoice in what you've done and lord it's about you it's not about us it's about you and what you've done so father i pray that you'll continue to to move thank you for this offering god we're going to take it and use it for your honor and your glory in jesus name amen invite somebody to come back tomorrow night amen all right all right okay we'll do one more we're gonna swap around hope you enjoyed that service 
And if God spoke to you during that service and you Dreamer, 
Cause I call in mind Heaven I don't care Call me crazy Cause I'm homesick for it But I have never been there Call me a stranger Cause it's all Call me anything when he calls me. Call me God. Call me God. I'll believe and call me God. You'll be grieving if you're left here without Jesus. You. It's for me to hear him call me, call me God. Yeah, yeah I've been called an awful lot of things in my lifetime. And to tell you the truth, some of them just wasn't smart. But thank God one day I met Jesus and made him the Lord of my life. And I caught it quits to a whole lot of sin. But because of that commitment, people laugh and call me foolish. Oh, but let them laugh. Because you see, that don't bother me. Because even the fool can see by the shape that this old world is in that she's about to fall. But just as long as I let Jesus call his shots, I won't have nothing to fear. Because when that roll is called yonder, don't you look for me. Because I ain't going to have you for two. And call me gone. I'll be leaving. Call me gone. You'll be grieving. If you're left here without Jesus, you come. I'll come back tomorrow night and we'll do that one. Yeah. Amen. All right. Amen. Word of testimony, somebody. Before you go, word of testimony. Man, we better start this service all over with then. Come on now, somebody give me a word of testimony before we go. All right, go. Amen. 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 I'm from the South here. Praise the Lord for everybody that's here. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord for the two that were saved. Ma'am. Praise the Lord for the two that were saved. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Well, let's stand. All right. Father, thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for tonight, God. Thank you for just how you just rained down on us, Father. Lord, we thank you for your presence tonight. And God, I ask you right now that you be with each and every one as they depart and they travel to their homes. I pray, God, that you'll just give them traveling mercies and, God, that you'll multiply their rest tonight. And, Lord, that we'd wake up ready to serve you in the morning and that we wouldn't miss an opportunity to, to tell how good you are and what you've done in our lives. 
Now, Father, be with us. Continue to guide us. I'll be with the service tomorrow night. And, Lord, I just ask you right now, Lord, fill your house. Fill your houses all over this country, God. Lord, we need you. We need revival so bad. Have your way. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. I hope you enjoyed that service. And if God spoke to you during that service and you've realized that you need a Savior and that you're lost and undone, and why don't you call out to the Lord? He's just waiting to hear from you. He already knows, and you know as well as anybody, if the Holy Spirit is drawing you. And right where you're at, you can call upon him. See, God can hear a whisper all the way to heaven from right where you're at because he sees your heart. Why don't you ask him to come in and be your Lord and Savior, to forgive you of your sins? He's waiting on you, but it's something that you have to do. If you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart, then you don't have a personal relationship. But that's what it takes. That's what it takes to know Jesus Christ as a personal relationship. So if that's you and you, you would like to receive Jesus into your heart and start this relationship, I'd ask you to pray with me. But pray in faith, believing that he'll save you. And he says he'll do just that. So why don't you pray with me? Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I know that you died for me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and you rose again. And right now, you're in heaven. Lord Jesus, I'm lost. And I need you to save me. Forgive me of my sins and come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. Now I want to live the rest of my life serving you. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer in faith and asked the Lord to save you, I want to be the first to tell you that you're saved. And that you're on your way to heaven if you prayed that prayer in faith and believed and asked God. We'd like to hear from you. You can contact us at thecrusaders-ministries.com. You can find us on Facebook. Send us a message. Or give me a call. 870-904-3118. We'd like to find out where you're at and get you involved in a local church. Try to help you. Start your walk with Jesus Christ in a positive way. But we're excited what God has done. And we look forward to hearing from you. And if you'd like to partner with the Crusaders, you can become uh, a seed partner by sowing a seed and meeting a need. We're a 501c3. We're a nonprofit organization. You can go to our website, thecrusaders-ministries.com, and you can... Give safe and secure there. You can give a one-time tax deductible donation or you can set it up to do monthly and it can just come straight out of your account. Whatever it is that God has placed upon your heart, I pray you'd be faithful to do that. And of course, if you have any questions or concerns, you can contact me, David, at 870-904-3118. Thank you again for watching this service and I pray it was a blessing to you and God bless you.